Hello friends, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to crochet a bowl cozy to keep your hands safe when you've got a hot bowl to carry. First, let's talk about what you're going to need for this project. You're going to need some yarn. I'm using cotton yarn for this because I want it to be microwave safe. I'm using this sort of outdoor woven yarn. It's like a very thick, very thick yarn. And it's not really like fiber. It's more like t-shirt yarn. And uh, I will link that in the description so that you can find it, but it's a very thick yarn. You can use a thick number five weight, even a number six chunky weight to make it comparable. I'll also be using these number three weight mercerized cottons. I'm going to be using a red and a purple for this project. You'll also need a crochet hook. I'm going to be using a 5.5 millimeter hook today. You could get away with a 5 millimeter, a 5.5, or a 6 millimeter for this project. You'll also need some scissors as well as a yarn needle to weave in your ends. So gather your supplies and let's jump in. We're going to be starting with the green yarn first. We're going to begin this project with a magic circle. So I've got the tail end of the yarn off to my left. Then I'm going to grab the yarn with my thumb and my middle finger, and I'm going to wrap over my index finger, come behind my fingers, underneath my middle finger. That's one wrap. And then I'm gonna wrap a second time. So over my index finger, behind my middle finger. And then I'll just bring it up and I'll hold with my thumb and my middle finger holding onto that yarn. Then I'm going to grab my hook and go in between my two fingers through the middle of that circle, and I'm going to grab the yarn with my hook, just like that. Then I'm going to pinch that spot, and I'm going to hold onto the circle like it is my work. Now I'm going to yarn over and chain two, yarn over, chain one, yarn over, chain two. Now I'm going to treat this circle as my work. So I'm gonna be working into that circle. I'm going to do nine double crochets. So this chain two and then nine additional double crochets for a total of 10 double crochets in my round. There's one, two, and nine. So I've done nine double crochets and a chain two at the beginning of the round, which adds up to a 10th double crochet. And we've almost filled up that circle. Now we can pull on the tail that we have from the beginning of the work and close that circle. So by pulling that tail, we're gonna tighten up that magic circle and create a nice tight circle with no hole in the bottom, just like that. And now the chain two that we started the round with, we're going to insert the hook between the chain two and the first double crochet. So we can separate our stitches like this. Here's the chain two, here's our first double crochet. We're gonna insert the hook into there, yarn over and pull through all of it. And that joins our circle, just like that. From here, chain two one and two. And there's round one. Now for round number two, we're going to put two double crochets in the space between the double crochets from the previous round. So this chain two counts as one. So in the first stitch here, we're just gonna put one double crochet. There's one. And then we're gonna move on to the space between the next two stitches. In this space, we're gonna put two double crochets. There's one and there's two. And now we're gonna move to the next space between the two double crochets right here. And we're gonna put two double crochets in that space. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around for round number two. So round number one has 10 stitches in it. Round number two is going to have 20 stitches in it. So two double crochets, in each space between the double crochets from the previous round. I'm gonna zoom through the rest of round number two and I'll meet you at the end to show you how we're going to join the round. Here I am at the end of round number two. I've just got one stitch left here. So I'm gonna put my last two double crochets into that last stitch. There's one and there's two. And now 
I'm going to pull the first two stitches apart and I'm going to insert my hook in between them, yarn over and pull through to slip stitch the round together. And there's round number two. This is what I deal with when I'm trying to crochet. Beelzebub just wants to always be involved. But we gotta work on round three, girl. So let's get into round number three. We're gonna start with a chain two. There's one, there's two. Now we're going to be putting two double crochets in the space between the double crochets whenever we come to a V like this. So you can see between these stitches, no V. Between these stitches, a V. And we're gonna be doing one double crochet in this space, two double crochets in this space. One double crochet in this space, two double crochets in this space, everywhere we come up to a V. So our first stitch right here is in fact a V. Our chain two counts as one double crochet, so we're gonna put a second double crochet in that space, just like that. And now our next stitch, or our next space rather, is not a V, it's two parallel stitches. So we're just going to put one double crochet in there. There we go. And now we're at a V. You can see there's two stitches coming out of one space and it looks like the letter V. In this space, two double crochets. There's one, and there's two. And in the next space, two parallel stitches, no V. So just one double crochet. And now in our next stitch, two stitches coming out of the same space. So two double crochets. There's one, and there's two. And we're gonna be repeating this all the way around. Two double crochets in one stitch, one double crochet in the next. Two in the next stitch, one in the next, all the way around. At the end of round three, you should have 30 stitches in your round. 29 double crochets and the chain two that you started the round with. So I'm gonna zoom through round number three and I'll meet you at the end to show you how we join the round. And here we are at the end of round number three. I'm going to insert my hook between the first two stitches, yarn over and pull through to join the round. Now for round number four, we're gonna start with a chain one. We're gonna be doing something a little bit different for this round. Here, we're going to single crochet around, but we're just going to crochet in the back loop of the stitch. This is basically our flat base for our bowl, and then we're going to create a little ridge around the base, and then we're going to taper out. So, in the back loop of the stitch, you can see there's two loops here. We usually put it through both of the loops like this and have two loops on the hook. We're going to just go through the back loop of the stitch like that then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the remaining loops on the hook, and that is a back loops only single crochet. We're going to back loops only single crochet all the way around for round number four. So we're not having any increases, you should still have 30 stitches at the end of round number four. And I'm just gonna zoom through round number four and I'll see you at the end of the round to show you how we're going to join for round number five. All right, I've made it to the end of round number four. I'm going to put my last stitch here and then I'm going to slip stitch to join through that first single crochet we did. And I'm gonna go through both loops for my joining of the round, just like that. And then for round number five, we're gonna start with a chain of two. Now for round number five, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. What we did for round number three is whenever we came up to a spot where two double crochets came out of one stitch, we put two double crochets. But now we've got that row of single crochets, but we're going to just draw a line from the spots where the two come out of one up to the single crochet. And we're going to put two double crochets in those spots, but a new variable we're adding is we're only gonna do that every other increase. So we've been doing 10 increases per round. This round, we're only gonna do five increases. So our chain two counts as one double crochet and this chain two has been an increased spot. So in the same spot, we just put our first chain two, we're going to put an additional double crochet. 
there's one double crochet. Now in the next single crochet, the one after that, the one after that, we're going to do all just one double crochet in each. So there's one, two, and now we're at a spot where there's another two coming out of one. And if we draw the line up, it would be this stitch where we would put two. But like I said, we're only gonna do the increases every other increase. So we're not going to do an increase here. We're just gonna put one double crochet. And then we're gonna have two more double crochets, one and two. There's one and there's two. And now we are at another increase. So here's the two double crochets coming out of one stitch. And if we just draw a line up, it's this single crochet. And in this one, we're going to do two double crochets. There's one and there's two. And then we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. One, two, three, four, five. And then in the sixth stitch, we're gonna be at another increase. So we're skipping this increase here. We'll do one double crochet and two double crochets. And then the third double crochet is gonna be where that increase we're skipping is. So we're just gonna put one double crochet in there, one in the next, one in the next. And then in the sixth one, we're at another increase. Here's the V draw the line up to the single crochet. And in that single crochet, we're gonna put two double crochets. I hope this is starting to make sense. Once you uh, do it a few times, it's a little bit easier to understand. Now we're gonna do five stitches with no increases. So there was one. And now in the sixth stitch, we're at an increase, draw the line up. This single crochet, we're gonna put two double crochets in. So I'm gonna repeat that all the way around for round number five. We're gonna do five double crochets and then two double crochets in the sixth stitch. Five double crochets and then two double crochets in the sixth stitch. I'll see you at the end of round number five. Here I am at the end of a round number five. You can see that single crochet round turned our little bowl cozy so we've got a flat bottom and now we're working out for the sides of the bowl. At the end of round five, you should have 35 stitches in your round. We've been doing 10 increases per round, but since we only did every other increase, we end up with just five increases. To close the round, I'm going to insert the hook between the first two stitches, yarn over and pull through all the loops. Now for round six, I'm gonna start with a chain two. Now for round number six, we're gonna do the same thing we did for round number five. Our chain two counts as a double crochet, so we're gonna put our second double crochet in the same space the chain two just came out of. Then we're going to double crochet one time in the space between each stitch from the previous round until we meet a spot where two double crochets are coming out of the same stitch. We're gonna have five increases in this round, just like the last one. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And then we are at a spot where two double crochets come out of one space. So in this space, we're gonna put two double crochets. So for this round, we're going to have six double crochets between each set of two stitches coming out of one. So for the next set, there's one, two, three, four, five and six. And then voila, we are at another spot where two double crochets are coming out of one stitch. In that spot, we're gonna put two double crochets. There's one and there's two. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around for this round. Again, we're going to end up with an increase of five stitches. So we're gonna go from 35 stitches in the round up to 40 stitches in the round. I'm gonna zoom through the rest of this round and I will meet you back at the beginning to show you how we're gonna close it up. Here I am coming up to the end of round number six. I'm just gonna put my last stitch in here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to slip stitch between the first stitch and the second stitch to join my round. For round number seven, I will start with a chain two, one and two. And then I'm gonna repeat what I did 
for round number six. I'll put a double crochet in the same spot the chain two came out of, and then I will double crochet around until I hit an increase. For this round, there will be seven stitches between each increase. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now we've made it to an increase, so I'm gonna put two double crochets in that space. For round number seven, you should end with 45 stitches in your round. I'm gonna zoom through the rest of round number seven because it's just seven double crochets and then two double crochets in the next stitch. Seven double crochets and then two double crochets in the next stitch. I'll see you at the end of round number seven to show you what we're gonna do next. All right, here I am at the end of round number seven. I'm going to join my round by slip stitching between the chain two and the first stitch like that. I've got 45 stitches in the round. You can see our single crochet row where we did the back loop only has created this nice sort of transition between the bottom of the bowl cover and the side. And then all of our increases are creating this nice round shape. So this is a good point to test with your bowl. If you're making for a specific bowl size, you can put the cozy on at this point and just sort of see that it fits around the bowl. You can see mine is curving at the same rate that the bowl is, so it's gonna fit perfectly on. If you're finding yours is a little bit too tight, you might need to adjust the first couple of rows to add more stitches. Let's move on to round number eight. For round eight, we're going to begin with a chain of two. We're going to follow the same increases that we've been doing. So we're gonna start with a double crochet in the first stitch where the chain two came out of. And then we're going to do eight double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then the next stitch is gonna be a spot where two double crochets come out of the same space. So we're gonna put two double crochets in there. For round number eight, we'll be doing eight double crochets in between two double crochets coming out of the same space. It's just a repeat of that all the way around. At the end of round number eight, you should have 50 stitches in your round. I'm gonna zoom through the rest of this round because it's just the same thing we've been doing. And I'll see you at the end of round number eight to show you what we're gonna do next. Here I am at the end of round number eight. I'm going to slip stitch to join the round and then chain two to begin round number nine. For round number nine, we're going to be doing no increases. We're just gonna double crochet around. So I'm still gonna start with a double crochet at the base of the chain. And I know that looks as though we've got two stitches coming out of one because we kinda do. But what I'm going to do is this last stitch that we've been putting in here, I'm not gonna put a stitch there. And that's just gonna create less of a gap. So one stitch in each stitch around for round number nine. No increases. At the end of round number nine, you should still have 50 stitches in your round. Here I am at the end of round number nine. I'm gonna put my last stitch in here. And because I put that first double crochet in the same space that the chain two came out of, we're not gonna be putting a double crochet in this last stitch because this basically is stealing from that stitch. It just creates less of a gap to have the stitch here as opposed to skipping this one and starting over here. Just believe me. Just stop when you hit 50 stitches. Then I'm gonna slip stitch the round to join and you can see it's a nice tight join there. Now for round number 10, I'm gonna chain two, and I'm going to begin by putting a double crochet in the same spot that the chain two came out of, just like we've been doing for the whole project. And now we're going to continue, and we're going to be doing increases again. So we're going to double crochet all the way until we reach the spot where the two double crochets are coming out of one space in the previous round. So we'll double crochet across to here. When we hit this space, which will be right here, we're gonna put two double crochets in. There should be nine double crochets in between each increase. So that's one increase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And after nine double crochets, we are at the spot where the two come out of one which is a little bit diagonally up, but don't worry about that. In that space, we're gonna put two double crochets. There's one and there's two. In the next nine double crochet spaces, we're gonna put one 
stitch in each. So there's one and nine. And now we're gonna put two double crochets in the next stitch. Again, there's the two double crochets coming out of one stitch, a little bit up diagonally. We're gonna put two double crochets in that stitch. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. Nine double crochets, and then two double crochets in the next stitch. Nine double crochets, and then two double crochets in the next stitch. I'm gonna zoom through the rest of the round because it's the exact same thing, and I'll meet you at the end of round number 10. At the end of round number 10, you should have 55 stitches in your round. Here I am at the end of round number 10. I'm gonna slip stitch to join the round. And for round number 11, I'm going to do one double crochet in each stitch around. So at the end of round number 11, you're still going to have 55 stitches in the round. Now we are going to repeat the same two row repeat all the way up to round number 16. So for round number 11, 13, and 15, we're just going to double crochet around. For round number 12, 14 and 16, we're going to do the increases. So for round number 12, there's going to be 10 stitches between each increase. For round number 14, there's going to be 11 stitches between each increase. And for round number 16, there's going to be 12 stitches between each increase. Just continue the increase in the same way we did for the last two rows, all the way up to round number 16. At the end of round number 16, you should have 70 stitches in your round. I'm going to zoom through the rest of these increases because it's exactly the same two rows. And I'll meet you at the end of round number 16 to show you what we're gonna do next for this cute little bowl cozy. And by the way, if you're liking the video so far, don't forget to click the thumbs up button. It really helps the channel grow and we're on a growth spurt. Thank you so much for clicking that like button. Now let's get back to the video. All right, I've made it to the end of round number 16 and we've got such a good bowl shape. You can see it's a little bit larger than the bowl that I'm using as a guide because we want it to have enough room to be used with multiple bowls. But you can see the curve is a nice curve up the bowl. And now I've gotten as deep as I want to get. I don't want this to go over the height of my bowl because then you have the risk of it getting hot liquid on it and we don't want that. So for round number 16, I am going to join the round with a slip stitch. And then round number 17, I'm gonna start with a chain of one. For round 17, I'm gonna do one round of single crochets. This is just going to create a nice edge for us to swap colors and create the petals for the little flower bowl cozy. So for this round, no increases, just single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around. I'll zoom through this and I'll see you at the end of round number 17. All right, I've joined round 17 with a slip stitch. And at this point, I'm going to trim my yarn and I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to do a pull through like this and then I am going to immediately weave in that end just so that we don't have to worry about doing that later. All right, now we're going to be switching colors. We've got this whole part woven in and finished. Now we're going to be switching to the red and purple. I'm gonna use two strands together because I think it looks cute. And what we're going to be doing is reattaching our yarn. I'm going to be reattaching though in the reverse order, or rather we're gonna be going backwards. So we had been working around the work like this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the work and we're gonna work around the work like this. Reason being, I want the top of the bowl cozy to be the right side of the fabric. The right side of the fabric is currently the outside of the bowl cozy. Either you can flip your work inside out and work it as normal, or you could do what I'm doing and leave it the way it was so we're gonna attach the yarn, but instead of attaching the yarn the way we've been working, you know, pulling up a loop like this and attaching the yarn, I'm gonna flip the work upside down and I'm going to be attaching the yarn this side. So let me find the beginning of my round. Right here is where we've got the beginning of our round. And I'm going to pull up a loop. I'm going to insert my hook into the stitch, yarn over with the new yarn and pull up a loop and then I'm going to yarn over and make one chain with both the tail and the working yarn with the new colors. Now for this next round, I'm going to drop the tail and I'm only going to work in the back loops only. So I'm going to insert my hook 
into the back loop only, and I'm gonna do a single crochet through just the back loop like that. And I'm going to crochet over the tail so I don't have to weave that in later. And I'm going to do a round of single crochet back loops only. So for this round, there's no increases, just single crochet back loops only. I'll zoom through the rest of this round because it's much of the same and I will see you at the end of the round. Here I am at the end of round number 18. I'm just gonna put my last single crochet through the back loops only, and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that chain one that we started the round with. It's a little snug because we used both tails in that section, but just wiggle around and get it connected. And then for round number 19, we're gonna start with a chain two, chain one, chain two. You can see by doing in the back loops only, we've changed the direction of our stitches. So the bowl will lay like this, and now our stitches are gonna be coming out sort of perpendicular to the side of the bowl. For round number 19, we're going to do another round with increases. We're gonna start with a double crochet into the same space the chain two came out of, and then we're going to do the next five stitches, one double crochet in each stitch. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And in the sixth stitch, we're going to do two double crochets. There's one and there's two. And then in the next five stitches, we'll do one double crochet in each stitch. And then in the sixth stitch, we'll do two double crochets. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around for round number 19. I'm gonna zoom through this part because it's the exact same repeat over and over again. And I'll meet you at the end of round number 19. At the end of round number 19, you should have 80 stitches in your round. All right, I'm putting my last double crochet on round 19, and then I'm gonna slip stitch the round to join. And now you can see when we've got our bowl cozy right side out, now the outer edge kind of flares out from the bowl cozy, which is gonna be how we shape some petals into here. So to do that, we are going to begin by making some eyelet holes for the petals to sit in. First though, we have to do another round of single crochets with no increase in them. So that's just gonna create a nice base for our eyelets to sit in. So what we're gonna do is single crochet around again. So no increases, just single crochet one time in each stitch around for round number 20. I'm just gonna zoom through round 20 because it's just single crochets and I'll see you at the end of the round to show you what we're gonna do next. All right, here I am at the end of round number 20. I'm gonna put my last single crochet in and then I will slip stitch the round at the chain one to join my round. For round number 21, this is where we're gonna be putting in the eyelets for our petals on the flower that will be our bowl cozy. At this point, if I put my bowl in, you can see the red and purple part sticks out straight. So the bowl is covered, and then this part will be to protect the tops of your hands and sort of a grip for you to hold on to. Moving into the eyelets. What we're gonna do for this eyelet is a single crochet chain two repeat. So we're gonna start with a chain one. Let me zoom you in for this. And first, we're going to single crochet into the first stitch, which is where the chain one came out of. Then we'll chain two, one and two. Then we're gonna skip one stitch, this one here, and then we'll single crochet into the following stitch. Then chain two, one and two, skip one stitch and single crochet into the following stitch. Then chain two, one and two, then skip one stitch, then single crochet into the following stitch. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. I will zoom through this as well because it is just chain two, skip one, single crochet. Chain two, skip one, single crochet. And I will see you at the end of the round to show you what we're gonna do next to make the petals. Here I am at the end of round 21. I've done my last single crochet skip one, and then instead of single crocheting, I'm just gonna join with a slip stitch at my initial single crochet. And now I am going to drop the red yarn. I'm going to be doing my petals just in the purple yarn. So I'm gonna drop the red yarn at this point, just cut that, and then we're gonna crochet over the tail and continue with just the purple yarn. For round number 22, 
we're gonna begin with a chain of two. Oh, scratch that. We're gonna begin with a chain of one. Then we're going to put a single crochet in the space that the chain one just came out of right here. We're gonna put a single crochet there. Then in the chain two space, we're going to put five double crochets. Again, I'm just crocheting over the red yarn tail. We're gonna put five double crochets in this chain two space. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And now in the single crochet space right here, we're gonna put one single crochet stitch. And now we're back at another chain two space. And I'm gonna put five double crochets in that chain two space. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're back at a single crochet. So I'm gonna put one single crochet into that stitch. And I'm gonna repeat this all the way around for round number 22. Five double crochets in the chain two spaces and a single crochet in the single crochet spaces. And I'm gonna repeat that all the way around. I'm gonna zoom through the rest of this round and I'll see you at the end of round number 22 to show you what we're gonna do next. All right, here I am at the end of the round. I'm just gonna put my last five double crochets into that chain two space here. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And then I don't have to do a single crochet because I'm joining the round at this point. So I'm just going to slip stitch to join the round at that first single crochet. And then I am not gonna chain one, but let me zoom you in for this next part. We're actually at our last round now. What we're gonna do for this last round is slip stitch all the way around. One slip stitch in each stitch all the way around. This is gonna create a nice thick edge on the edge of the petals, which is gonna look pretty and a little bit more refined and a little bit more finished. So just go one slip stitch through each stitch all the way around, and I'm gonna zoom through the rest of the round and I'll meet you at the end to show you what it's looking like and what we're gonna do to finish off this very cute flower bowl cozy project. And here I am at the end of the last round. I'm just going to slip stitch into the last stitch to sort of finish the round off. There's not really a joining. And then I am going to what am I gonna do? I'm gonna cut my yarn here and I'm gonna pull that last bit through. And now I'm going to weave in this last end. So let me just get that done and I'll be right back. And just like that, friends, our adorable little bowl cozy is finished. We added these adorable petals, making our bowl cozy look like a little flower, which I think is so cute. It honestly also kind of looks like a hat, but it doesn't quite fit a head, so it's not a hat. This is not a hat, this is a bowl cozy. By doing our single crochet back loops only, we created a nice flat bottom with a ridge between where the bottom of the bowl cozy is and the sides. And then we did that tapered increase to create the bowl shape. Then we did another round with the back loops only to change the direction of our work. Then we used the back loops only again to change the direction of the work so that the petals would come out to the side. So then the bowl is separate from these side petals. And by doing the sort of shell stitch where we did five double crochets, we created these adorable individual petals. The slip stitch that we put on the last round thickened up the edge and created a bit of a concave nature to each of the petals just to create a little more texture. And as you can see, when we put the bowl inside, your hands are fully protected from the hot liquid inside. Beelzebub uh, gives it her seal of approval. Anyways, friends, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below if you're going to make a bowl cozy just like this one. They do well as gifts. They are stackable, so you can make a couple of them, and then they look like a little bowl of flowers, which is so sweet. They do sort of look like a hat. Maybe we need to make a little floral hat like this. <laughs> but correct size for a head. This will not cover uh, an adult head, perhaps a child's head. So bowl cozy or hat. <laughs> also, I just wanna say thank you so much to everyone who is supporting the channel this month. Here is the list of channel supporters. Thank you members, thank you patrons, thank you everyone who is taking the time to support this channel, you're awesome. And if you would like to join and support the channel as well, check out all the links in the description box down below. All the ways to support are there and anything you can do is greatly appreciated. 
appreciated. And don't forget to click the like button. If you haven't clicked that thumbs up button yet on the video, take a second now and click that thumbs up. It really does help the channel and I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, friends, that is all I've got for you for today. I'll see you next week. Bye.